Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to slap some decals on this bag. And it, they're actually going to be geometry decals. They're going to be sort of shrink wrapped to this bag using UV transform. And I'm also going to be using an effect in the shader tree called RGBA, which is different than diffuse color. And it, it's actually super useful for decals because it'll take the alpha of your ping file and it'll use that as a stencil automatically. You don't have to set that up separately. So let me get going here. UV transform, I think there's uh, quite a few videos on it. And the first thing you typically do when using this is you have to make sure the mesh you're going to be shrink wrapping to has a UV map. And I bought this guy in ArtStation and it did come with a really good UV map actually, just using a mini props here to pop up my UV window. And so it came with this UV map, which is good. And it's all unwrapped and proportionate and that's what you want. And I'm going to go up, up here to the texture drop down and say, uh, convert UVs to mesh. And so what this will do is it'll take that uh, UV map we just showed, it'll create that mesh out of that. And we can sit it right next to our bag as sort of a map on wh where we're gonna draw our decals. We'll just call this, uh, well, yeah, UV mesh is fine. And it's going to just create a mesh right there next to it. So let me select this guy. I'm just gonna change some uh, display properties. First, I'm gonna turn off rendering. I don't want it to render and I'm also going to add some draw options. We'll say the draw style is wireframe and the wireframe is user. And then I'll do like a maybe a green sort of uh, wireframe or like color like that maybe. And there you can see it nice there in the viewport. And yeah, so this is our sort of template to draw on top of. And the geometry we draw on it is going to be shrink wrapped over on top of the bag using the UV transform mesh op. So I'm going to just press in for a new mesh item and call this decal. This is where we're going to draw our geometry into this mesh item, our, our polygons. And I'm going to right click and add a, uh, under shade, a create an item mask. What that'll do is it'll put a folder in the shader tree and it's going to be pointing right there to that mesh item. And any um, changes to the, anything in the shader, any images, any procedural textures, any, this material are going to be applied to whatever polygons are in that decal mesh item. So. I am going to throw an image in here right now. And I also had grabbed a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff over on ArtStation, a bunch of images. So here's just like a sci-fi texture map. Oh yeah, the one, the one I wanted to wait is like right at the top here. So uh, watch out, I do dumb shit. I thought it was kind of funny. So I'm just gonna drag this guy right into my mask and it's gonna be right there. I can see that it's defaulting to UV, uh, the UV texture right there. And if I, for instance, like I said, anything in this group is gonna wind up on whatever polygons wind up in this mesh item. So if I, for instance, you know, draw a sphere in this mesh item, it's gonna pick up that image, right? And even though this image is set to diffuse color, it, it's a ping with a built-in alpha, uh, uh, alpha channel, right? So, you know, it, it sees this color there to watch out, I do dumb shit, but underneath it, you know, it's transparent around that and any color I have on the material underneath, you can see I just made it purple, is gonna show through. So that's important because I'm gonna show you how to do it kind of wrong first with using diffuse color, then we're gonna switch that to RGBA and you can see how much nicer it is. So we'll hide our images here and I'm just gonna delete uh, that sphere. We don't need it. We're just gonna start drawing geometry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is draw a patch on the side here. And that's uh, this part of the UV map. So I'm just gonna draw right in here. I'm just gonna draw a circle there. So I'm gonna select my uh, uh, cylinder primitive, and I'm just gonna kind of push in and you know draw a circle. And there it is. And you can see this uh, geometry. Is, you know, Moda is smart enough to make a UV map for this um, primitive, the circle I'm drawing. You can see right here, it's filling up the entire UV space. So it's grabbing that image. You know, it's getting the image um, from this mask right here, and it's you know it looks good. And it just has to be UV transformed over here. So on our decal, let's do uh, pop up our mesh items here or, or a mesh stack and say UV transform. And this is going to ask us which mesh we're transforming this to. That's the bag. And then the texture is the name of the UV map we're transforming that to. Hit OK. And you'll see it's being pushed over there. But there's a couple of issues. One, it's not a perfectly flat surface. This bag right here has, you know, all these sort of bumps, these sort of clothy bump stuff. So it's not totally planar and we're losing some of our polygons underneath that. So let's start over. Let's go back to the decal here and let's go down to the base mesh, select my polygon and delete it. Now, this is important. I have UV transform on this mesh already. If I have UV transform selected, you'll notice that all this is gray, like all of my you know mesh creation tools are gray. In order to create mesh or polygons or points or curves or whatever, 
in a mesh that has mesh operations on it, I have to have the base mesh selected. And furthermore, I have to have ghosting on. Now, I don't know if this, why that's a requirement exactly. I think they're trying to maybe force good practice here, but if I turn ghosting off, you'll notice that all these are ghosted now. Turn ghosting back on, and these are all back on. And so with ghosting on and with the base mesh selected, and again, I'm gonna select my uh, uh, cylinder here. I'm just gonna draw out another circle and put it on my uh, little circle right here. Let me just do a couple things. I'm gonna turn on the corners so I can just drag the corners and sort of align it that way, a bit easier. And then I'm gonna change the caps from single polygon to quad grid. And if I go to wireframe, you can see that we've got a quad grid there. And it, even if I, you see I have Omnihall, right, right mouse, uh, left, right. And again, on like any primitive, like pretty much bevels, anything in Moto, Omnihall is pre-set up for side segments, number. So if I just right mouse, left, right, I can increase or decrease the number of segments on that. And that's gonna give me the geometry I need to sort of, you know, go over, you know, shrink wrap all those little bumps on the side of that bag. So I'm just gonna, let me just go back to advanced here. And then you'll see it over here now. Ghosting, of course, always makes it blue, right? Unghosted, you can see it, but I can't do anything <laughs> with my mesh. But when it's ghosted, I can adjust my mesh. I just see, you know, this ghosted blue thing here. So, you know, you either have to turn ghosted on or off to see it, or you have to select the UV transform and you can see it. Now it's still a little, you know, it's not perfectly, there's not enough geometry to perfectly make it sit on shrink wrap to the top of that. So what I'll do is on the UV transform, there's a little push here. I'll just push it off the surface like one millimeter. So there we go, got it on that side. And then I can um, do the same thing. I just go down here to my base mesh. And instead of drawing another one down here, I'm just going to turn on the move tool and I'm going to control shift and drag it. But before I do that, I'm gonna turn on this little button here, which is deferring this mesh op. So with that on, once I start mousing down, I can go really fast. It's not trying to do the calculations of shrink wrapping this whole thing over there while I drag it down. It'll start shrink wrapping and calculating that UV transform once I mouse up, and there it goes. So again, mouse down, I can move it around, mouse up, it'll transfer it over there, and there it is. So I turn off ghosting, I can see it. So again, I've got to do a couple things. One, I need to rotate them to get them sort of you know, aligned to the top of this bag here. If I turn on the grid, you can see where the Y up is. And in fact, let me just pop on a render, uh, whoops, a, a preview window over here. Maybe I'll actually collapse um, collapse my tools there for now. I'll just sort of go over so you can see this. And so again, you're seeing what's happening with diffuse uh, color on here, right? Diffuse color, it's applying the alpha channel, but we're just seeing this material underneath it. What we really wanna do is change this, right click, and go on to special effects. And here it says RGBA, not the most descriptive name. It should be called like uh, RGB alpha stencil or something like that. But if I if I select that, it's gonna use that alpha as a stencil and, whoops, under special, and it's gonna give me what I want. See what it did? So now it's stenciling away, just sort of, you know, chopping away uh, all the polygons that have an alpha of zero. And, and so we're not getting into that material color underneath. So our stencil's working, but we're not aligned here. One, it's inverted. So I need to uh, just scale this in one axis and negative 100. So we'll just use my little mini props over here to do that. And then F to flip it. And now E to rotate. And I'll just sort of uh, rotate this around and checking the uh, preview window till I get it right. Okay, looks good there. Let's come over here, get these guys in order. All right, that looks pretty good. Seems uh, appropriate for one of my bags. Just uh, pop out my tools again, and let's do some decals um, in this area right here. So if I look at my UV map, that is down at the bottom. So in my template, I wanna be drawing geometry down at the bottom here. I'm just close the UV map and make sure that my decal uh, mesh is selected. So base mesh is selected, ghosting is on. That means my tools are active and I can draw on here, whoops. So I'm gonna click and drag. You can see that I've got uh, my guy there. And I need segments, so I can right click and add some segments. I can also go down here and just say like 20, uh, 20, and I wanna say just one on Z, because I don't need obviously any segments in depth. Let me just sort of fix it up here. I'll switch out the decal. 
because this item mask works nice just as in this tutorial, but because everything in here is picking up that same image, I really want to use uh, just regular material P tags as masks. So put this guy in here. I'm going to turn on my little defer uh, evaluation here so I can move this over with no delay. And then when I mouse up, it'll do the uh, mesh op and transform that over there. So there we go, looking like that. So let's grab these two and call that decal front. And it should show up at the top of the shader tree, but it, if it puts it in another mask, just drag it out. And then these two over here, I'll call decal sides. And let me just drag that to the top. And that should be a bug. It should put those at the top automatically. Drag our decal uh, sides image to the sides here. I can delete that original mask. And we can take a look. So there's our side decals. Our front decals are right here. So we need to get a sticker for them. So I'll go back over to my asset folder and find something relevant. Biohazard's always good. Again, you want to right click and go to recent and RGBA. When I change this one to front decal two and make it something else so it doesn't look, it's not exactly the same. <laughs> I think you get the idea now, though. Let's just pick up another image, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, cyberpunk, why not? Is the cyberpunk bag there, so. There we go. Cyberpunk, I have that game on Steam. I have not played it yet. I've been waiting for it to uh, be done. Is it done? It's been like two years. Should I wait another year before I play it? I want the optimal experience. Anyway, so, you know, it's a kind of a cool way to work. I always freeze these mesh operations by right-clicking and say freeze mesh operation freeze. So here you go. You have these decals that are actually geometry, so you could do things like uh, deform them or thicken them or do mesh ops on them or maybe do physics and shatter them and have them fall off, whatever. And instead of just a layer in the shader tree, they're actual decals made out of geometry. Yum, yum!